Okay, uh, hi, uh, am I loud enough? Yeah, yes, okay. So hi, uh, this is my first time speaking in talk. Yes, yeah, so Yay. be gentle with me. Basically, this talk is about like. Um, so, so you want to you want to project your voice, I think. Um, uh, like shout, my, pretend shout. you're yelling at a naughty child. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you should stand up. Stand up. Oh, okay. Uh, stand up. So, this talk is about uh, the Fetch API. So, has anybody heard of this uh, Fetch? It's a new thing in JavaScript. Only heard. Only heard. Okay. So this talk will be about sort of like an introduction. So we all know our SHR is S M L HTTP request. So the syntax like this. So this is what we usually always do to fetch any request from server. And think like we do some server requests. So the f why do we need to have fetch? Basically, it's like a replacement for SHR. So it's a nicer syntax. It's aimed to be more powerful and more low level than SHR. And why? It's because you can use ES6 as a promise. And you can use it as a So why is fetch? This is the basic syntax. It's just a maybe a fetch and URL, and you have a then, which is like a promise that returns you a response. So this is what you get. And Another one is like slightly more complicated. It's, you see that it's a nicer syntax than like your SHR, you don't have to call any events and do any. So it's just a very nice uh, how you do it frequently at Ajax. So it's a very similar to Ajax. And this currently the support for browser is only for Chrome and Firefox. There's no for Safari and Edge. So yeah. Then you can read about this one. Okay. So uh, because fetch uses promises, so y'all should be familiar with are you familiar with promises? Yeah, so for those who are not, then we can do a quick refresh like promise is just like you have a function <coughs> that pass in the result and reject, then the response is just some value, then you pass in a then you fulfill the catch is the we catch the error. So there's the ES5 syntax, how you do a fetch, and the ES6. It's quite it's quite similar, just only mm -hmm. really place the arrow mm -hmm. with a function. So so ES six. So what is the building of fetch? So fetch we see out headers and body and request and response. So body is just an <coughs> interface where the request and response is part of the body. So request and response actually has method part of the body. So uh, headers. So in HHR, your headers you always do something like this set request header, just very familiar. So fetch. So in fetch, you can actually do something like this. So you see that um, you just when you do a basic or you pass in a, a variable. So this this part is your your headers will be like this. So it's mm -hmm. like a very nice syntax. Uh, and you can do something like this, you pass in a variable, create a new headers object, then you just append. So you just like <coughs> doing an object. So this is like, yeah. there's like three methods for like, under the headers object that you can find in the MDN. There's a very good resource about headers, so you can actually read about this. So, and another thing is like, you can actually query the headers, you can actually do that in this job. So you can actually like, based on the return response, you can uh, get the type of your response and pass it correctly. So that is powerful thing about fetch. So you can read about this. Next is the request. So uh, this is another way to initialize your fetch. So you can actually do something like this. So like you make a new request object. So this is a uh, you pass in the URL to your uh, uh, resource, then you can get the response to your based on the request that you pass in. So um, the syntax is a bit weird. So it's like you pass in this somehow is your this domain is based on the <coughs> domain that you pass in. So it's actually quite 
nice. If it's okay, then yeah. So another method is that like you can do something like this. So request is like the first uh, argument is a URL, and next is just a any object. <coughs> so this is with service worker. You can use it as service worker. Then this more request. So next is the response. So. So, so okay, this is just a test of how uh, the demo basic, basic demo is like. It's a fetch. I'm trying to get an image from the box. So I just do your basic get. I try to print out the response and try to pass it in, in, into HTML. So I'm just like run this one. See. You can actually see the request is like to fetch. This is the response. This is the response. Yeah, this is the response object that you can you get from the actual fetch. So you can just see that there is all these properties that you can actually query. Like you can get the URL, the response to OK, the headers. Yeah. Okay. Next more response. Okay, the body. Yeah, body is a, like a bit. How do you say that? You can actually know what is the format. You can pass in the format of the actual response based on these like, five different uh, format, like form data, JSON, string, or a buffer. And you can actually pass in, this is also like you can actually pass in your data. So this is the body uh, property. So so this this part is your, okay, your this, um, the init object, you can pass in a property called body and this is your, your JSON stringify some data and you can pass it to the server. And next is uh, okay when you're getting a response you can actually pass uh, the the object type of the response using a promise. So if you know your promise syntax like this then is that when you do a fetch, you call it then the response you return a, a response and you change it to a dot. So you do a dot JSON, for example, you're fetching your JSON data. You can actually do another then, it's a promises, then you can actually this data is actually is a pass to data. So you don't have to do anything about do a JSON dot pass. So it's quite handy in a way. So it's the same for other object type. So like text, you can do the same like you can do a response dot text, response dot status text. Handling errors, okay. In fetch, handling errors is a bit, um, you have to be careful about it. So, because, like, for fetch, any HTTP, HTTP error status is like all the status that you state in the class will be all be considered as a response. So, if your error status is like a 4 4, you still be a response. So, if I find that if you're doing the fetch, uh, you do a then, then you didn't do a catch, you try to do a you know how you do a promise, you try to have uh, two function like a reject and a res uh, result in the reject, you find it doesn't have any error in the reject. It's like quite, if you find that you couldn't see the error, you might get caught off, like why is it my error is not being cleared up. So you might need to throw your, like do a, do a check on the response status, like okay on this status code 404, I, I need to throw this error or the response is not. It's a false, it's a like it's not a correct response, and you need to throw that error. So you might need to do something like this. So it's like on like uh, usually your status will be 200, <coughs> 300, you do a you return the actual response and if it's not then you throw an error that is yeah, then you catch it in the next thing. So Question. it's like, uh, does that actually follow in that Or do you have to manually go like how that? Uh we don't have so it's part of the same. so it's this fetch is just like uh, just do the uh, this is uh, no we don't have to do any fetch so if it's uh, 302 then it redirects and um, it does the second call for you um, I think inside no. fetch you can supply some options so probably one of the options is that you can, you can specify whether it's or not true or yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. and what's the default uh, I think it's it's not redirecting. 
Yeah, I need to check. It'll, it'll follow a redirect, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think you have to turn that off explicitly. Because yeah. that otherwise that would that would make any time you send a 302 or like a re, or a redirect, that would uh, that is a redirect. Uh, that would make everything break if they're expecting uh, 200 or whatever. Oh, okay. So yeah, like by default, I, I believe it's one. Um, but uh, and one of the reasons why this is useful is because uh, I think there's. I remember coming across difficulties using the XHR interface mm -hmm. to not to detect when it actually redirects. I don't think you can do it or something, or you have to do some something bad. I, don't know. I remember it was painful. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have a Okay. Okay. So we have some small demos. Like, let's try out with uh, Spotify. Okay, uh, we can try out fetch, see whether we can, like instead of HHR, we try to do a fetch based on this API. Let's see how it works. So, in fetch, you do something. The first argument is uh, <coughs> the URL, the second is the options object. Uh, so, because by default it's a get request, but if you want to be sure, then you can use something like this. Then, um, uh, yeah. You probably don't need the O of, because for Spotify it's like <coughs> Can okay, it's sort of public? So, let's print up the response. So let's see what it turns. So it returns the response is okay. So if you want to, yeah, you can actually say like print out. If you let's say if you want to know what is the uh, the header type. get the response type so it's a JSON JSON yeah so uh, so you can actually pass in like using promises you can the good thing about promises is that you can actually like author your change the data in a way and the next then you can sort of get your Can you get the object of your um, <coughs> Yep. So, yeah, so should you use fetch today? Uh, well, no. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, because.
because there are some issues with uh, fetch, it's not fully complete the API. Uh, it's supposed to be like used with uh, the new API called Streams, which is so new that I can't find any information about it <laughs> except this link and yeah. So the problem with fetch is that you can't really avoid a send request like if you send a request and you say I, I want to cancel it, you, there's no way you do that. Because I think it's because of the way it's using promises and there's no way that you say I send a promise and don't want to I don't want to honor my promise. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Yeah. And there's no progress event so you, there's no way to know like when your data is coming back, so you sort of have to just wait or something. So this is waiting it's supposed to be used with streams API. So yeah, that's the this is fetch so far. Yes. And thank you. So this talk is online so you can actually like get this slide. Very similar to request module, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it uses promises, so yeah. it's probably closer to um, super agent potentially. Oh, okay. Yeah. Super request, sorry. Right. No, super, super agent, uh, yeah, super agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any um, feedback on on using the fetch API? I know that you've been using yeah. it a bit. Yeah, so. so so uh, one of one of the thing that wasn't mentioned is that uh, Fetch API actually allows you to specify some options when you're sending your request. So you can actually say like things like, for example, do you want to include your credentials like your cookies when you're sending the request, or things like uh, do do you, do you want to do the cross site request cross cross request? So so these these are the options that you can set in, in Fetch quite easily. So it's a very convenient thing. To so you can actually do something like uh, if you say you want to send a, a credential, if there's a way like you can there's like different properties like mode you can specify cost or no cost like if you want to yeah. or same domain yeah this one is called with credentials with credentials and it's a it's a boolean property yeah yeah it's like the thing about this with credential is like you must always you always request for a credential if you didn't send, if you happen to send a request and didn't have a credential then you might get some error. Yeah. You said you're using it in service workers also? So uh, service workers? Mm, not really. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes. in service workers you can't use XHR? Because it was one of the advantages you said. I was wondering why. All of the service yeah. worker examples that I've seen used to fetch. Yeah, so it's all fetch. I, 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 I haven't seen any way that they say that we're not allowed to fetch. I, I, I have a feeling that it's something to do with like it plugs into the fetch, like it sort of allows you to subvert what's happening with the fetch API, um, and maybe maybe if you've got if you're using the fetch API, they can. It's still in flux, so they can they can change the way that works. But XHR, they don't, they can't really change the way that works because it's like you know everything will break. Maybe and that's a problem. Yeah. 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 What would you ever want to use no force model? Mm. The, the other day, I was trying to use fetch to do a thing, and he was giving me. Okay, so I don't I don't really understand what's happening. 
to be honest. Um, <laughs> but, but the other day I was trying to do a cross-origin request to an API which didn't, which was not sending any cause. Uh, it didn't allow. It didn't explicitly allow cross-origin requests. Now uh, it was giving when I requested that um, API, it complained in my browser saying, "No, nah, you can't do this. It's cross-origin request. <coughs> no." Nah. Um, but I said no cause, and then suddenly I could do cross origin request. <laughs> I, I think it's something to do with like the way that it deals with um, like uh, trust, maybe. So when the response comes, uh, I don't know actually. <laughs> but that's how I mean, that just happened the other day. So code or didn't happen. Other thing with this that's cool is uh, there's a fetch. Well, one there's a fetch polyfill, so you can use it today in all browsers. Mm -hmm. um, Two, there's a uh, fetch, um, uh, an isomorphic fetch tool, which allows you, to, you can use the same API on in Node. So you can use um, this in Node. Uh, so you need to talk. <laughs> well, it also works really well with async and await. Oh, uh, yeah, it's all yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just beautiful. Like, you just do the await fetch. Yeah. And then you, just, like, you can just await the response and put the JSON in. And now with the with the one line arrow functions, you, you don't need, you don't need to let the response you know equals greater than mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful with Babel. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get you can get all you can't get the weight, but yeah, it's three zero. Yeah, three zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Are there anything to look up for? Um, I mean, since this is using the promise uh, style, so I assume like. If you don't handle the errors, it will just fail silently. Yeah, it? yeah. So you must make sure that you are you're throwing. If your response is not, I think this is not the, it's not returning the okay response. It's false. So just send. You just throw the error. It's not. Yeah, handle it. So if you build it through, um, it will just fail suddenly. No. Uh, no, it's it's you will just resolve as a as a as a correct as a response. So if like if I say for example if my response I do, a, then I run it again. You will still give back a response. And it's just like the the it's just yeah you just give you back response. So it's. It's so like for any HTTP, unless it's yours, internet connection failed, then it will give you back error. So for any server request, that, like uh, any error status, it, it will just give you back response. So, yeah. yeah, but return status zero, right? It's not even validation of this status, right? I mean, like the status response. It doesn't seem to be HTTP value status. If, if it fails, it should be back like under I mean, it's just it's kind of bug. I think that, yeah. it's not a bug, it's double joint. Mm -hmm. uh, any time there's like a, um, we can't even send a request because something's wrong, that's when you get like the status zero. Oh. Uh, so like this is kind of like, it didn't even so send it didn't a request. Well, I don't think so. Uh, okay. Why did it send a request and the only change was the URL? Uh, maybe with prudent. Then then it teals. Oh, it could be wrong. Maybe, maybe I don't know. That's what you're going on, I think. You think so, yeah. Not for a good <coughs> So, uh, yeah. So it's going to hang out. Yeah. What was wrong with the previous? I mean, that's, that's still a valid request, right? So you're getting both of the both, both of the dens. Because it's a valid request, it just happens to be a 404. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The HTTP level errors are not going to be throwing, uh, are yeah. not going to be uh, going to catch. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's successful responses. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Things like that. If you change that whole thing, if you change like the URL to have like a different scheme, no, no, no. Like the first part, like they change the HTTPS to like XYZ. Yeah. This this should keep your status zero so probably, right? Yeah. 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 Maybe. maybe Okay, so, so what happens now is your, your browser catches it. Um, yeah. But because you haven't said like a catch or a second parameter to then. Um, but if you do it, you just have an async await thing, then it'll actually throw an error. So now it just it didn't throw an error, that's just your browser catching that. But in your, in your code, it will get an error.
Well, in the cache you're not doing anything. In the cache you're just returning the error. Yeah. If you call console.log. Yeah, you can just write yeah, it. You have to do call Yeah, just ignoring the error. So it's still throwing exceptions, right? But it just doesn't throw exception on uh, HTTP failures. It's not. I don't think it's not actually throwing an exception. It's a, uh, an unhandled rejection that you're getting. Yeah. If you're doing a, uh, async, then it would throw an error. If you're doing, oh, you're doing like, like async away. Yeah. 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 So well, but hang on, is that is that actually thrown? I think that's the same thing. Yeah, but it's still, it's, it's still when you call the sync function, it's still converting the promise. So, yeah. so in the end, at the top level, you still have to handle the rejection. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it becomes an unhandled. Uh, uh, but you, you'd be doing yeah. away from that function. Yeah. So an unhandled rejection. But eventually, which is at the top problem. level, yeah. at the top level, if you call the sync function, you return the promise. It's it's implemented as promise, but you can just if you put away at the top level, it's the same thing. Yeah. You can't put it away. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, move on to the next text. Thank you.